wanted to touch on something. Um, when you put your belts in, your safety belts, I'll show you how to properly lace them or, you know, weave the, the strap. But the mounts, these mounts here that mount the belt to the chassis, you want to make sure that that mount is the best you can positioned in the direction of pull. Uh, so like when we tighten them down, you want that the surface area, the, the flatness of the slit that this is woven through to be in the direction that the belt is going to be pulling. Um, like say in the event of a crash, the G-forces and the tension that's put on these, you want it dispersed smoothly and evenly across this mount. If it's crooked, let's say, so my picture my seat here, my waist is gonna be here, the belt is gonna be tightened in a position about like this. <clears throat> if you look, that's kind of not in the direction that this is gonna be pulling in. And what it can do is it can create an edge, a sharp um, edge that could cut the belt or damage it. Um, so I'm going to reposition this so it's more, more vertical in the direction of the pull. I already did these. These ones were way off. So, um, and then when you lace them, uh, let me see if I can do this with one hand. When you lace them, you want to double pass them through your... Um, uh, lace buckle here so you're gonna pass it through the bottom it goes through through this first uh, this is the tail this is your lead uh, you're gonna go through your mount buckle here and then back through your lead buckle both ends and then the rule books require them to be double passed which is basically what we would call a lock-in so now you go back over and then it double backs on itself but over this and in this one get it in there and then you pull it through it should look like that and then I think the rules specify you have to have at least three inches of your of your tail hanging out. Um, I don't like to put the lead buckle right up against the uh, mount buckle because that could rub metal on metal with fabric in between it. It could it could create friction and cut it. So I give it a little bit of space, and it's easier for adjustability if we need to adjust these when we get in. So so this. This is the proper way to do it. And I'm gonna adjust this so it's tilted more in the direction of pull. Um, just a little a little tidbit. I was going through and checking things, see how dramatic that one is. It's up and down. I'm gonna change that so it's it's pulling more in the direction of pull. So, and then your back straps are the same way. You want them double low also. Uh, these wrap around the bars, so get them as close as possible, but you double lock them in on the lead and the tails all um, zip tie out of the way on the back side. So that's, uh, that's it, just a little, little information.
thing's leaking the power steering fluid and it's getting blown back onto that front header pipe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it to saturate this wrap so bad no. that it burns it. No. Alright, I'm going to try this video again. I've uh, attempted to record it a few times and uh, for some reason it's not working so I'll try it again. Make sure uh, you saw here, I put the light up, made this little mechanism here. You just pull this, this slides out so we can take this off. This thing gets really beat up during the race and uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass to clean. So uh, unless we're gonna use it, I don't think it'll be on the truck. Uh, John was here all weekend and really helped a lot. Um, it was great to have a second set of eyes uh, looking at everything because between him and I thrashing on it for 72 hours straight, we discovered a whole bunch of little things that um, you know I just didn't catch. Uh, but with having a fresh set of eyes here um, really helped. As you can see right there, that is power steering fluid. That's the only thing that's leaking off the truck. We had this thing idling for, oh, I don't know, about 45 minutes, our last run up. Um, and no leaks, no coolant leaks. The uh, enclosed sealed coolant system worked great. The radiator temp at idle without the fans running um, got to about 98 degrees. Once we turned the fans on, um, it maintained it right around 98 to 100. You could touch it. It was great. Head temperatures were about 190 to 200. Um, everything looking awesome. So back to the power steering leak. I made a stupid mistake, and this was probably a month ago when I put or two months ago when I put the power steering pump in and everything, I had got these backwards. So the pressure line was going into the return port on the power steering box and the return line was coming out of the, the um, pressure port. And what that did was created a ton of pressure in the brand new power steering pump. It's a tough stuff power steering pump. Um, it's a really good pump and it held out as long as it could. When it started whining, uh, we thought maybe it was just uh, air bubbles in the system, so we were flushing it, uh, trying to get all the air out, and then uh, now it's making noise, and it toasted a seal around the drive shaft of the pump, and that's what's leaking. So, new one will be here tomorrow, and I'll get that swapped out. Uh, I'm gonna get that taken out today, so when the new one comes, I can drop it right back in. We discovered that one of my master cylinders was bad. Luckily I had a spare, so we swapped that out. Um, gonna bleed the brakes today or tomorrow. Uh, fire suppression systems in, you guys uh, saw that. Um, this is an automatic system, so there's no pull tab anymore. I've got one nozzle that's in the center console to protect the electrical and the uh, transmission and the other one is right over the top of the engine in between the fuel rails. The fuel line, uh, fuel pressure input for the fuel rail is right there. So uh, that'll hit that, and it's a lot larger bottle for more coverage. Um, had to get new batteries. Went with the Optima Yellow Tops because uh, that's what's available in town. The Odysseys just took a crap for some reason. Uh, they only had one race on them, but I've discovered with those Odysseys that if you uh, just let them sit, even for a short amount of time, a couple of months, uh, they self-discharge. So not sure what's going on there. Um, and starting out, they were really killer batteries, but now I don't know. I think uh, we'll try these Optima Yellow Tops. Today, the plan is to get the tin work all in on my side. Uh, the seats and uh, this the sheet metal here. Um, I'm going to get the roof bolted down and the chase lights and brake lights loomed up. I'm going to get the Starlink and stuff put in, the GoPro camera mounts, figure out where those are going to go for good coverage. Uh, yeah, pretty much get the interior all buttoned up. Uh, that's it. And then uh, we've got all this weekend to test. Decided not to test uh, over this weekend just because with John here, I wanted to use the opportunity of, like I said, his second set of eyes and make sure all that little stuff is fixed 
and um, it, like I said, it was a, a great thing that he was here because we did find a bunch of little stuff that could have been big issues. Um, as for the whole new system, all the electrical and everything, the relays I put in, they're working awesome. We don't have any you know, ground faults or major uh, amperage draws or anything. Everything just fires right up, so pretty excited about it. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. This is my list here. Tuesday, that's today. I'm gonna get the drive shaft done, the seats and tens, get the roof and chase lights and all the Starlink and GoPros and all that stuff done. Wednesday, the power steering pump will be here. I'll throw that in. I'm gonna get the rear fender mounts made for the new fenders. Well, not the new fenders, but the new configuration of the back end uh, for the rear fenders. And then um, uh, the muffler mounts, because I did change the location of the muffler. So I'm gonna put a beefier mount there. Uh, Thursday, um, I might. I might replace the coolant sensor for the race pack. Um, it's picking up a weird reading and it's kind of intermittent. So race pack sending me a new one. If that gets here in time, I'll swap it out. And that's it. Final assembly. I'm going to shuffle trucks around. I'm going to put the chassis in here. I'm going to move my truck out there. And then I'm going to bring uh, Brandon 7200 in here because we're going to do some major changes to it and getting it ready for Rage at the River. Friday, I'm picking Brandon up at the airport. And then, uh, anyway, yeah getting the chase trail or the race trailer and everything set up for the trip all right that's it that's what i'm gonna do everything's looking good and um i've said it before but i'll say it this time taking this time off and getting this thing completely dialed in to start finishing races and get really 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 serious about this this is the best uh this truck has ever been um i, I yeah we're gonna run conservatively and um, consistent at the race. And uh, I think we're gonna do really well. Knock on wood, not to jinx myself. Every time I say that, something happens. So. <laughs> you just never know in this sport. So that's where we're at. All right, later.